Hi guys and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here welcome thank you very much for stopping by my name's Leonie I am currently a mum to my toddler Isla and I'm pregnant with baby number two I'm currently 31 weeks today so in today's video I'm going to be taking you along my labour and birth prep journey I'm currently 31 weeks so average nine weeks left and I really want to start getting my body prepared doing what I can to optimize my chances of having a v-back um, for those of you who don't know a v-back is a vaginal birth after c-section my first baby was c-section so I'm hoping I can deliver vaginally this time so this might be handy for you if you're like a first time mum wanting to birth vaginally as well so yeah nine weeks left guys give or take so Let's get this prep started. So the first thing I am doing on my labour and birth prep is making sure I increase my intake of bone broth. Now bone broth is not just for pregnancy and labour, it is fantastic for just everyday use intake. It has got so many great, great health benefits. I really recommend it. Like have a Google about the health benefits for you, like using bone broth things like protein collagen your amino acids are all in here it tastes like watery gravy so if you like gravy then you'll be absolutely fine with it but i've been using it for years now i've actually got a video from like 2018 of me how i make my own bone broth but you can buy it in cartons as well so this is a ready-made one i just heat up and i can have a cup of that and you can also get bone broth powder as well i'll link the products down below but you can put this in your soups so i'm having a soup for lunch so i'm just going to add a little bit of my powder there smoothies if you're making stews anything that's a bit saucy you can add some in you're just getting that collagen and protein and also i'm going to have a cup of this today and i am making my own as well just to stock up because it is cheaper just to make your own like buy bones from the butchers add in some veg so i link my how to make bone broth below as well but in terms of like pregnancy and labor it's just it's just got so many health benefits it's meant to like really strengthen your uterus like the collagen that's really good postpartum it's going to be amazing for you as well so i would just like look into the health benefits of that um really get onto that i'm like honestly they say like colostrum is liquid gold for babies this is well not got a gold but this is liquid for mamas so i am officially well actually not officially i am nearly 32 weeks so it's time to start raspberry leaf tea so they do recommend you start this from 32 weeks um i'm a few days off so i'm sure it's not gonna hurt i use this tea this actual brand with isla this is hot tea mama and this is their it's called the final push it's raspberry leaf tea and it's got peppermint in it as well it's a really nice tasting one absolutely recommend this one i will link it down below but yeah i'm gonna have um these tea bags can be used twice so i'm going to have like a couple of these a day i think maybe they say start off with one cup or whatever but i feel like i'll be fine with like two cups a day but yeah um th this is like highly recommended like i think there's a misconception that this tea will help bring on labor that's not the case um it's just meant to help with your uterus um, make things all nice and ripe for labor like dates and things like that um so yeah don't be under any illusion this is gonna you know start labor if you're overdue this is gonna help you go into labor because that's not the case it just helps everything get prepared get nice and um healthy for labor so i'm gonna start it today so i am back with a bit more labor prep i think it's been a while since i've actually done anything for this vlog I am nearly 40 weeks now and what I've been doing since 36 weeks is having date smoothies. They recommend about six dates a day from 36 weeks and that's just meant to help ripen your cervix or your ut uterus. Um, it's not labour inducing or anything like that but it's meant to just be something that's meant to help you along as well. So I've got a big bag of dates so what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend them up in the smoothie because i cannot like stomach dates they're just too sweet so i'm gonna put one two three four five six dates in my smoothie and then what i've done as well is i've made some raspberry leaf tea but like a cooled version of it so i've got four tea bags just put boiling water in like one of these like decanter things and let that cool and i use that to blend up my dates with 
because you really do need a bit of water to help blend those dates in. Um, so yeah, and it's just another way that you can get your raspberry leaf tea in if you need to. So there's my raspberry leaf tea. So that's all blended up now. I like to blend those two together before I start adding in my frozen fruit, just because I feel like dates are quite tough to blend up, especially in my blender. And if you have a bigger blender, it might be all right. And I want to just get them as thin as possible because I did it once, like just adding everything in and blending. I can still like taste like bits of them. So I've blended all that up and now I'm going to get my frozen fruit. So I highly recommend frozen fruit for smoothies. I just think they taste a lot nicer when everything's frozen and you can blend it all up. It's like an ice smoothie so i'm going for some summer fruits or you know you can get mixed berries or whatever they call them and then some pineapple i think it's a good mix sometimes i put banana in there just really depends on what you like really but um a flavor enough if you're not a fan of dates something that's quite strong that's going to cover up that date taste but also bear in mind dates are really sweet so you don't want to make it too sweet either so i definitely made far too much of this smoothie today but yeah that is my pregnancy prep smoothie basically a smoothie with dates and your raspberry leaf tea so i am on my way to my acupuncturist and i've been seeing her well i saw her for my moxibustion treatment to turn baby from breached to like head down position i've got a whole video on that and then from 37 weeks i've been doing a labor prep acupuncture with her so i think it's recommended from 36 weeks but i couldn't make 36 weeks but for 37 weeks i am doing labor prep so you have your obviously your acupuncture your needles and it's to help like bring things down just ripen everything like that and get your body ready for labor so i've been doing that i really enjoy it i am i highly rate acupuncture i've had it before with my back pains where a few years ago when i like struggled really bad in my back i really really rate it i am someone that is very much into my holistic treatments and i think they work really well and i am very keen to like do stuff that are, is more natural and nice on the body and um, some things can be very invasive and as i said i'm trying my best to do stuff to help give me the best chance for a v-back and a, a good labor this time so i highly recommend acupuncture if you watch like any kind of like how to prep your body for labor anything like that acupuncture is very very recommended um just it, it pains as well like pains in labor it helps with like your spd and things like that so highly recommend you look out for a local acupuncturist and um, look for getting a bit of like labor prep from like 36 weeks so let's talk oils in terms of birth prep now if you're looking to have a v-back or a vaginal birth it's really important that you start doing your perineal massage and that is the bit of skin in between your vagina and your butthole the place that is going to tear if it's going to tear so the idea is you massage it to kind of like loosen it up make it nice and supple you just want to get that skin really nice just to help if there is like any tearing or you know to stop tearing or at least minimize the damage so i am using the my expert midwife peri peri bits there are a few different ones out there just be careful what you're putting down there because it is a sensitive area but i try and do that every night at least and definitely start as early as possible if you can or at least in the third trimester if you haven't started already I must admit that sometimes I'm a bit neglectful of doing this. I just forget. I get in bed. I'm tired. I'm heavily pregnant and I just want to go sleep and I forget to do it. But yeah, I highly recommend um, doing a perineal massage if you want to birth vaginally. And then the next oil for labour prep is my favourite brand, Babyopathy. And this is the birthday oil. So I've been using this in my diffuser for quite a while now um, because it's going to be the oil I'm using in labour. So I'm just getting used to it and you know it's going to be some nice triggers but from 38 weeks i started using this a in the bath putting some drops in the bath because it's got clary sage oil and clary sage is one of those oils that they say is meant to help you know bring on things ripen things um in terms of like your uterus and labor and going into labor and then i've been using it topically as well from 39 weeks i was just using it once maybe twice a day from 39 weeks i've been mixing it um never put this directly or any essential oils directly on your skin you need to put them with a carrier oil so i have the um bumps and bits babyopathy carrier oil and i've just mixing it in a pot 
um, with some oil as well. So I do like 10 mils. This is like a medicine but And then like 10 drops in there and then just whack it on. And then from 40 weeks, four times a day, just trying to ramp it up and get things going and nice and supple. So oils, you know me, if you've been watching my videos, very much important in my, just my pregnancy journey, my birth prep journey and definitely going to be in my labour journey. So essential oils, oils for birth prep. So my last recommendation is to get chiropractor treatment. I believe I started around 32 weeks and I was doing it every couple of weeks. It really depends on your treatment plan, what you will need, how long you will need it, you know, the ratio of treatments. But for me, I did it every couple of weeks, two to three weeks. I did it because A, I wanted to help prevent my back pain and my SPD. And also I had seen on a couple of VBAC groups about people going to chiropractor appointments just to check out their pelvis. Now I went to some of the, that I went to previously in years gone by when I did my back in. So they had some medical notes there. And back, back then, that was about 2018, no, 19, I, nine, maybe, late 19 early 20 and on the notes there it said i had a twisted and tilted pelvis which obviously is not good if you want to give birth naturally um and again when she looked at me this time round, i had that issue so we really worked on aligning that pelvis giving me the best optimal chance of a vaginal delivery and it truly really really helped as well last time with isla i had really bad spd like the pain was so bad towards the end of my pregnancy this time around because i was having all these chiropractor treatments i i barely had any pain when it comes to spd i still got the occasional backache but nothing compared to how i was with isla so i believe it truly made such a difference to my pregnancy to my birth, just getting my pelvis aligned, also being more conscious of sitting and um, like I work at desk, so when I was at home, I was making sure I was sitting on my birthing ball a lot more, making sure that I wasn't like slouching back, just really being conscious about my posture and how I sat. So yeah, I highly re recommend seeing like a chiropractor in terms of just seeing, making sure that you've got no misaligned or tilted pelvis because that could obstruct your labour. So I hope you find these tips helpful. And if you're thinking, mm, are they really going to work? They're really going to help me. I did achieve my VBAC delivery. It was a very smooth and quick delivery. My birth story is up already on youtube so i will link it up here and down below for you guys to go check that out if you haven't already but just to go over it i had about two hours of early labor two hours of established labor i had four minutes of pushing i pushed her out in two pushes my body was so prepped and ready to go i just i felt so empowered and i truly believe that everything i've done to prep my body for this vaginal labor really did work wonders and if i was to have another baby i would completely do this all over again all this prep you know things are just so different my body was you know from the prepping of the uterus the just the mental side as well of it just you know being so focused and chiropractor appointment making sure everything was aligned i just i feel like yeah it's money but for me, it was so important to have a VBAC delivery this time and it was so worth it because my recovery as well has just been absolutely fantastic. Um, I will be doing a video on my postpartum journey, everything I've done so far to help me recover there. But yeah, I I just, I'm so glad that I, I focused more on prepping my body this time and it really did work wonders. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and found it helpful. And please subscribe to my channel already. I've got a lot more newborn content coming. I've got a few um, just leftover pregnancy and postpartum bits coming as well. And I'll see you guys in another video. Goodbye.